Okay, a very warm welcome to everybody. I'm delighted to see you. Now, the last time I was in here and had that as a backdrop, it was the Student Awards, uh, which was an amazing occasion. Um, and I think this is equally going to an amazing occasion. Absolutely delighted to welcome you to the University of Plymouth and to our Sustainable Earth Conference. Um, Plymouth has for a very long time been an absolute leader in the area of sustainability in institutions in the UK. I've come from Plymouth from other places, but I was absolutely aware of Plymouth's amazing success over the years. And the award-winning approach, I think, is because Plymouth has been able to integrate its teaching, its research, and its campus environment into a single sustainability objective, aspiration, and delivery as well. Um, it's why Plymouth has been uh, ranked consistently one of the greenest universities in the UK and indeed beyond our borders. So the Sustainable Earth Institute, launched now, this year, leads on that sustainability research activity and brings together researchers from across the university, different disciplines and perspectives, which of course is inherent to this subject, from geoscience, biology, environmental science, engineering, business, health, psychology, the arts and humanities, so right across the university. Of course, what it enables us to do is to just deliver this essential new way of thinking about the world, bringing together researchers and professionals, community groups and individuals to develop cutting-edge research, but then innovative approaches which help individuals and communities to build resilience uh, to global challenges. It's an area, vice chancellors have to be very supportive of all institutes at their universities, but this one is especially a pleasure. It's my own area. Um, I've spent all of my working life on the science society and engagement in environmental issues, public engagement and community engagement around environmental issues. I've been a champion of uh, sustainability at two other institutions. So this is a very special um, institute for me and immensely proud to be able to see the program that's been put together and the amazing uh, visitors as well as our own staff who we have here to join in the event. Much of our focus, of course, has to be global um, because we're facing global challenges and those require a very holistic and inter interdisciplinary but very open approach. So the conference is going to be very much a showcase of the research activity, celebration, and it's a good opportunity to celebrate sustainability science and action at the local, national, and international level. It's, however, going to provide space, and it's a great program. Um, I can't stay for the whole program, but it looks amazing, the program. Someone said to me earlier on, it's typical of sustainability conferences, but not those that happen in universities. Well, that's not what happens at Plymouth. We know how to deliver good sustainability conferences, obviously, because it has those edgy sessions, those open sessions for new forms of networking and communication and thought process, which isn't just about delivering science papers, although they are important. I'd like to thank all the presenters for the two days and in particular special mention to the external pre presenters from a, a range of expertise and for travelling to be with us today. Um, I think the furthest traveller is from Calcutta, I can't see her, there she is, good to see you. Um, and so thank you very much for joining us and I hope that the conversations and the discussions and the reflections are really rich because of that diversity. As you've just heard, we have Wendy Dark, who's the former head of the BBC Natural History Unit. I said to Wendy earlier, that's the one job I would love to have had, but she got it instead, um, and I can see why. Um, and she's now founder of True to Nature Limited, and Anthony Hobley, who's chief executive officer of Carbon Tracker. Uh, Sir Mark Walpert, the government chief scientist, um, is a uh, and Craig Bennett, CEO of Friends of the Earth, will be joining tomorrow. Craig's got the difficult spot tomorrow morning, which we were just discussing, depending what the outcome of the vote is today in the referendum. But we are sure he is up to the task of delivering whatever is appropriate tomorrow at 9.30. Uh, and I'm sure he's got um, a suitable in each pocket uh, outcomes. Of course, as academics, we know where we stand on this particular issue. Um, also, strong uh, welcome to Dr. Lindsay Withers from the Devonport Lifehouse, which is Salvation Army, Alistair McPherson, who's CEO of Plymouth Energy Community, poet Matt Harvey, who I think is entertainment for this evening in particular, um, Paul Winston, Managing Director of Langage Farm, great cream, I will say that now. Um, 
and Professor Vala Ragnar uh, Dostar from uh, Iceland, who I was talking to earlier. So uh, a really great spread of speakers. I should also say a massive thanks to the organisers, um, to Ian Stewart, Tim Daly, Paul Harmon, Kirsty Henderson at the Institute for putting on this event. They have done a superb job just getting everybody here and the sheer excitement of the programme. So lots to look forward to, whether you're a member of staff, a student, a returning partner or a new visitor. Um, I do hope you enjoy a fantastic full, two full days. Um, we're going to be celebrating, making new connections, challenging thoughts, challenging reflections around sustainability challenges and in the spirit very much of collaboration and to look at what we can achieve together going forward. So great pleasure now to introduce Ian as director of the new Sustainable Earth Institute and thank you so much for joining us all. <laughs> thank you VC, that was my speech. <laughs> that's what I was going to say, but that's fantastic. That's um, it's a fantastic endorsement, as, as is the endorsement of, of all of you turning up. Um, in a way, this is the launch, the kind of formal launch of the Sustainable Earth Institute. But, it, it, but really, we've been ticking away for a few months behind the scenes, quietly, getting on with a few events, finding our feet. And this is really what I would call, um, I guess, the working launch. Because what we, what we want to do today and tomorrow is to set out a kind of manifesto of what we do. And so um, there's great variety in the, in the university around sustainability, and you've heard bits of that. And really the point of this exercise is to showcase that, to showcase that within the programme formally, within uh, many of the talks, and to showcase it um, around the room. And as was um, suggested there, there is huge diversity in this subject. And what we'll see over the next few days is a rather eclectic mix. And that's deliberate. That's deliberate because in previous years when we've had things, sometimes people come in, they do their bit, and then they, they leave. And actually, the, the point that we all realise here about sustainability is how interconnected and joined up it is. And so we've really kind of, it's a bit of a mashup. And um, we, we hope what it's going to be is really interesting. It's not going to be boring. We're hoping it's going to stay the right, sense, it's the right side of chaotic and be interesting and busy and all the rest of it without anything else. But certainly the variety that we've got on show is, is, is quite um, incredible. And that is the thing about sustainability. Sustainability is, is a tricky word. For some people, that idea of the wise stewardship of, of our resources, of our lives, is a no-brainer. It makes perfect sense. It infuses people's kind of DNA about the way they work the values that they pass on, and, and exactly what their outlook is in the world. Um, for other people, it is a, a kind of fashionable phase that's going through. It's an irritant in, the, in this general thing about progress and human endeavour, a kind of a, I, I don't know, a 21st century manifest destiny of, of getting in the way of us just getting on with things. And I think there'll be very few people, if anyone, in the room with that. But the point is that sustainability is, is very difficult. Uh, in terms, and in particular, I think in terms of um, convincing necessarily, uh, sometimes quite conservative people about the need for change. It was interesting, we were chatting earlier about this idea about sustainability, a lot of the modes for sustainability happening outside of universities because universities have actually been quite conservative about taking it on. That is not the case at Plymouth. Um, as you, I'm sure, are aware, if you're not, you'll soon find out. Sustainability permeates the whole fabric of Plymouth University and has for some time, whether it's by operations, teaching or, or research. What it does mean is I think there's a, a challenge in bringing everyone on that actually sustainability is such an all-pervasive, um, overarching area that really we should be thinking about it in almost all dimensions of our research. And, and I, I like this idea that really I know the problems are absolutely global and one of the mission statements we have is that we are uh, tackling, as should every sustainable institute around the, the world, the world's most pressing problems. You know, at the same time there's this idea that um, we need to be doing that from a point of capacity of expertise. These are really crucial points and we need to use our, our knowledge, our experience uh, well. Um, I was talking to, to Vala Ragnar's daughter uh, last night, you'll be hearing from her tomorrow, and she was telling me a story of, um, of a university not that far up the uh, rail line, where she was trying to bring sustainability through the university, and one of the 
senior members of staff leaned over one day and said, saving the world is not part of my job description. And I think that notion of how we bring people on to be thinking of taking their research expertise and applying it to the problems we all know are out there is one of the great uh, challenges. And so I think that's what we're really going to be uh, tackling over the next few days, which is that there will be um, an attention sometimes at quite local areas, but the idea is that these are little um, testing grounds for things that could be scaled up to, to the bigger problems. And I think what we'll also see is a great diversity in the approaches. In the one hand, it's tricky for universities doing sustainability because it's so huge, it's so broad, that almost no university can actually claim to be doing all bits of it. And so there is a dilemma about what you do and what you cover up. Do you try to do everything or do you try to focus on your areas? And by focusing on your areas, what do you expose as, as critical things you're not doing? And what we'll see is that Plymouth is probably broader than most for our size. And I, I hope they say the, the uh, posters around the edges will really show that. But what universities can absolutely do is that holistic approach. Within 50, 100 yards of this place is just about every discipline going. So we've got, so the Sustainable Earth Institute, it's, it's rooted in the, uh, the Faculty of, of Science and Engineering, so it's kind of home, if you like, is, is increasingly in the geo-environmental and biological sciences. But actually it reaches out to every uh, part of the university, whether it's business, health, arts, humanities, uh, etc. And that's crucial because that binding, that merging, fusing of those interdisciplinary research is going to be absolutely at the heart of how we tackle uh, many of these issues. So really, I don't want to say too much because we've got a fantastic programme. I think what we'll see is see, we'll dip in to the small scale and the local, the atomic, as we were chatting earlier on. But I hope not too much. But, and you'll see lots of different things coming through from, from say, psychology and architecture and, and just about every part of the university. But the also the plan is to remind ourselves of the bigger picture, that planetary scale. And what we've tried to do is to have that um, with sort of bookend, bookended uh, uh, keynotes. And actually, I'll do them in reverse order, but they've already been mentioned to some extent. The event's going to close tomorrow to a crescendo of applause to Sir Mark Walpert who's going to be talking about waste. And waste is kind of the alter ego of sustainability. It's the thing that sits right underneath. And so uh, talking about waste and its importance, so Mark's currently done a big UK-wide review on, on waste policy. Um, as the VC said tomorrow morning, Craig Bennett has got the unenviable task of standing up at breakfast where there's only going to be one thing on people's lips. And so he's decided that's exactly what he's going to talk about. He's got two talks. We'll see which talk actually comes out. <laughs> And he'll be looking at that big picture about what does the future look for environmental, uh, for environment and climate change policy in the new politics. Um, today, there's this other, kind of the focus on, is on these kind of real world contexts of what we do. And the, the, there are two particularly. The second one is going to be Anthony Hobley, who's really going to be set at the stall for how the financial an economic system can play a role in, the, uh, in, in what's uh, coming forward. That is in the sense that the financial and banking system is what actually funds at the moment the status quo, and that's going to be the thing that needs to fund the envisaged transition out of that status quo. So that's a, a real world uh, importance. But we're going to start with something, as you might imagine, is kind of dear to my heart, which is another real world context, which is communication. How do we effectively get across the messages about our world, how we think of our world, and what we want for the future? And I can think of absolutely no one better to do that than Wendy Dark, 